What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony and today we are in the new 2020 Nissan Altima per your request courtesy of Faulkner Nissan in Mechanicsburg, PA. And so I first saw this one at the New York Auto Show. I was there during the press event. I saw it up close. It was amazing. It was a complete redesign. It looked amazing. And so since then, I have yet to review it. So therefore, we are in this one today. So as always, you guys, let's start with pricing. And so there will be several different trim levels as expected for the 2020 Altima. First one being S starting at $24,100. Then you have the SR, which is the one we have today, starting at $25,700. Then there is the SV for $27,880. SL for $30,240. And the Platinum starting at $32,180. And so that was all pricing for the front wheel drive variant. There is all wheel drive available for every single trim level. If you wanted to go that route that we have today, actually simply add $1,350 to any of those prices. And by the way, that all wheel drive setup is gonna be offered only for the base engine. There is an optional engine setup that is gonna add $4,050 if you wanted the turbocharged engine. Speaking of, let's go into the power plants on the 2020 Altima here. First power plant, the one we have today is going to be a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder engine, putting out 188 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 182 pound feet of torque available at 6,000 RPM or 3,600 RPM if you go with the front wheel drive setup. But either way, again, power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a CVT, giving you a zero to 60, approximately 7.4 seconds with MPG numbers 20 28 in the city, 39 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 25 city, 35 highway for the all wheel drive. By the way, that particular engine setup does take regular unleaded fuel. And then there is the optional engine setup, the turbocharged version for the Altima. Two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, 248 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, 273 pound feet of torque available at 4,000 RPM. Power only sent to the front wheels, as I was previously saying, through a CVT giving you a zero to 60 approximately 6.1 seconds with MPG numbers 25 in the city, 34 on the highway. Premium fuel is recommended for that one. You can take regular fuel in the Nissan Altima with that turbocharged engine setup, but you will lose some horsepower and torque numbers if you were to do that. So that is why premium fuel is recommended. But having said all that, I did want to also mention paddle shifters that we have today. These are available. They aren't available. They are standard for the SR trim levels. That is going to be the one in only trim level that you are going to find paddle shifters on so having said that let's go ahead and do a quick little paddle shifter test and let's see how quickly they react for us here they do actually react pretty quick you got to keep in the back of your mind this is a cvt so it's kind of simulated shifting but still quick reacting paddle shifters although i will say with the paddle shifters i know we're just in an altima but the gtr does have magnesium paddle shifters wouldn't have minded that in the altima just like in the 370z as well but still they're plastic paddle shifters but it's still kind of cool that they're there but having said all that let's go ahead now and do the acceleration test and let's see how quickly we can get the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated engine set up here up to speed <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, kind of slow. <laughs> All right, so as far as acceleration goes for the Altima, definitely probably wouldn't mind springing for the uh, turbocharged engine setup in this thing. It is kind of a larger sedan, so you would expect you may need it, but I do like that this Altima offers all wheel drive. I will say that because not many of its competitors, if any, that I can think of, maybe the Subaru Legacy, but other than that, the Honda Accord, Toyota Camry, these cars don't offer all wheel drive. So I am super happy that the Altima does, but having said that, kind of wish they would have paired up the all wheel drive setup with the turbocharged engine setup as well, just so you could have the best of both worlds there because that acceleration did leave just a little bit to be desired there. But so now that I am sitting on a red light and Having said that, braking is equally important. Up front, you will find ventilated front discs in the back, solid rear discs. And that is one thing that's definitely been quite nice in my test drive today. Braking feel is excellent, so no issues there. Touching on suspension and handling a little bit, there is an independent strut front suspension in the back, an independent multi-link rear suspension, all 
also good there. I did want to mention for the SR trim levels, both the SR that we have today and the SR Turbo, we are going to get a sport tuned suspension, so a little better handling there as well, along with front and rear stabilizer bars, and that's actually going to be standard for all trim levels. But my short little test drive today, I've had no issues with the steering feel. It is a little bit on the looser side, but then again, it is as expected. Now we'll see the Maximo, of course, does have a heavier weighted steering feel to it, but the Ultima isn't bad, no issues there. Ride quality has actually been excellent, definitely no issues there. And I actually don't do this, but I've gone over several speed bumps in my test drive today, and uh, Ultima definitely soaked them up very nicely. So impressed with the ride quality when it comes to cabin noise, again, no issues for me. And if you wanted the very least cabin noise available with the Ultima, simply go with the SV trim level and up, because with those trim levels, you will get acoustic laminated glass, which is really gonna absorb a lot of those exterior sounds while driving on the highway, things like that. But, but then touching on visibility, this is one of the definite strong suits of the Altima. I can see perfectly fine out the back. So excellent visibility when it comes to the Nissan Altima. But of course, now having touched on the exterior at the beginning of the video, let's go ahead and make our way to the exterior because as I was previously saying, this recent redesign of the Nissan Altima definitely looks good. So let's go ahead and make our way to the front of this one. All right, so now touching on the exterior of the 2020 Nissan Altima. Up front, you will find Nissan's signature front grille with active grille shutters actually located behind that front grille, kind of to assist with engine cooling if it's needed. Also, dark chrome accents are going to be found with the SR trim level. That is going to be just regular chrome for every other trim level, though. But that is, of course, what you're looking at right now. And then to the sides, when it comes to the headlights, there will be halogen projector headlights for the S trim level. However, if you went with the SR trim level and up, you're going to find LED headlights. So that is definitely pretty cool. Definitely a safety feature in itself at night. Just below that, LED fog lights are going to come with the SV trim level and up. So that is, of course, going to be down there as well. And overall, again, with the redesign, the Nissan Altima definitely looks very menacing, very aggressive up front, comparatively speaking to the old body design, of course. But now let's make our way to the side. One of the first things I noticed is there is a ever so slight overhang with the uh, the hood and the front fender there. That is one of the interesting things I noticed at the New York Auto Show when I first saw this one, but kind of a design cue, I believe. At least I think that is what it is there for, but either way, it doesn't affect functionality at all. It's just something a little bit different. A different is usually a good thing, but also around the back, of course, you're gonna have that floating roof line as often found with Nissan's designs on their vehicles, but chrome belt line molding can be found on the bottom part of the windows there. Again, a nice little design cue. When it comes to the side mirrors, there will be body colored side mirrors that will come standard. However, if you went with one of the SR trim levels, you will get black side mirrors, of course. That is what you are looking at right now. And they will actually come heated with LED integrated turn signals if you went with the SV trim level and up. Then taking a look down at the wheel design, 16 inch steel wheels with covers are gonna come with the S trim level. However, if you want with the SV or SL, you're gonna find 17 inch aluminum alloy wheels. And lastly, the SR and Platinum are gonna give you 19 inch aluminum alloy wheels. And that of course is what you're looking at right now. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the Altima. You guys have noticed, I'm sure there is no gas tank on the passenger side. It is located on the driver's side for anyone curious. Trim level badging can be found in the back as expected. Again, showing off that we have the SR trim level, the sportier version. No LED tail lights are gonna be available on the Altima. So I guess that is one of the downsides. Although I will say the tail light design does look good. Kind of wish they would have had LEDs at least offered on the platinum trim level or one of the higher ones at very minimum. But I do also like the chrome accent here on the rear bumper. That's kind of cool. It's kind of like a, a scuff plate for your rear bumper, I guess you could say, when you're loading and unloading stuff in there. But just below it all, rear diffuser you guys are looking at right now. And to the sides of that, you are going to find a single exhaust outlet with the S trim level. However, all other trim levels, not just the SR that we have today, every single other trim level is going to give you dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. So you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip.
It's open now since we are around back. When it comes to opening that rear trunk, there actually is a button on the key fob, so simply just press that if you like. Also from the driver's seat, there is a button just by the driver's left knee, another way you can open up the trunk back there. But once opened up, cargo capacity is gonna come in at 15.4 cubic feet. If that was not enough space for you, those rear seats do fold down. There is a 60-40 split for every single trim level, giving you a good bit of extra space there if you needed it. Then make your way up to the rear legroom. That is going to come in at 35.2 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Did what I also mentioned for those rear passengers. There is a rear center armrest with cup holders for them for little added comfort. Although I was surprised to find there is no rear ventilation, at least in the SR trim level that we have today. So that was kind of interesting. But making your way up to the front seats, cloth seating will come standard with the S and SV trim levels. Leatherette surfaces are going to come with the SR. That is what, of course, you are looking at right now and there will be full leather seating if you go with the sl trim level and up heated front seats if you wanted them go with the sv trim level and up and all trims are actually going to give you an eight-way power adjustable driver seat and if you wanted that power adjustable passenger seat for your passenger go with the sl trim level and up but overall i will say in my short driving stint today the seats are quite comfortable so i wouldn't see any issues with taking the ultima on a long road trip if you wanted to go that route but Taking a look at the steering wheel, this is one of the cool things about this one. There is a tilt and telescoping steering wheel. It will come heated for the SV trim level and up. Leather wrapped for the SR trim level and up. Did want to also mention there is a flat bottom here with the SR trim level. So that is the cool part. I'm absolutely loving the flat bottom steering wheel here in the Altima. So nonetheless, let's go ahead and get to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. Everything that you need is actually located on one side of the key fob. You do have lock, unlock, that button to pop the rear hatch and that little circular button at the very top there that is going to be a remote start which is going to come standard actually on every single trim level of the Altima that's definitely a plus and also to go along with that every single trim level will also give you a push button start that little button is located just in front of the shifter there so it's actually how I'm going to start this one up here all I'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button there it's open that once started up tachometers on your left speedometers on your right there is a digital display front and center if fairly large digital display at that actually. It's gonna tell you things like the outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, but also there are steering wheel mounting controls on the left side of the steering wheel. There's a ton of different things you can scroll through, like your radio settings. There's some safety features you can check out up there. Digital speedometer if you wanted it. Average fuel economy. There's just a ton of different things you could check out there, but Touching on overall interior quality, dual zone climate control comes standard for the SV trim level and up. Power moonroof is going to come with the SV and up once again, and that is actually available for the SR, although we don't have it today, but it is available for the SR trim level there. Interior accent lighting is going to come with the platinum. That, of course, is the top trim level there. Piano black interior trim is going to come with the SV, platinum, and SL trim levels. There's going to be a wood tone trim if you go with the platinum as well. And as far as our SR trim level today, looking around the interior, I do love the orange contrast stitching that can be found just above the passenger side glove box as well as on the doors and the seats, of course, as well. But there also is some aluminum trim in the front here as well as some carbon fiber look on the doors as well but overall i guess you could say a very sporty interior there's some usb hookups as well as a phone charger auxiliary outlet 12 volt power outlet just in front of the shifter there there's a couple cup holders and by the way these two cup holders next to the shifter are surrounded in that carbon fiber look trim once again also electronic parking brake that was the first thing i was greeted with before i took off i kind of got to get used to that i guess and just behind that there is a decent sized little cubby area with a little tray up there as well so overall a very sporty and very functional interior for the nissan altima but let's check out the tech display now up front you're going to find an eight inch color touchscreen display actually for every single trim level across the board well done nissan there bluetooth and audio streaming will come standard as well as android auto and apple carplay once again Again, well done Nissan for that and you can also of course check out your radio settings up on that display by the way sound system wise you will get six speakers for the S SR and SV trim levels however if you want with the SL or platinum you're gonna get a nine speaker Bose sound system but since we do have the SR today we do have the six speaker sound system so let's go ahead and turn on the radio let's see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one Honestly, I've heard a lot of six speaker sound systems. That one has a decent amount of bass. 
for a six speaker sound system. I love Bose sound systems. I had them in my old Infinity, loved it, never had any issues. So definitely a solid pick there too, but the six speaker sound system, kind of impressed with the bass there. So not a bad option. Last thing on the Texas Ball I wanted to mention to you guys is when you go ahead and put the Nissan Altima in reverse, you will find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you for every single trim level which as always is going to lead us into safety. And so particularly with the Nissan Altima, first thing I wanted to mention is a very plus side of the Altima IIHS top safety pick. So that is always gonna be a benefit, of course, keeping you safe. Front side and side curtain airbags will come standard as well as driver and passenger knee airbags. That typically doesn't come standard on most vehicles out there. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also standard, a tire pressure monitoring system as expected but also standard on all trim levels. Some of the cool safety features, forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking, driver attention monitor. So it's gonna kind of monitor your driving habits and alert you if it feels like you're starting to get drowsy. SR trim level and up that we have today is also going to add automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning, blind spot warning system with rear cross traffic alert. And that's gonna be the little yellow light kind of in the corners of the interior here. That's gonna alert you that way. Also rear parking distance distance warning, rear automatic braking, high beam assist, and lastly, the SV trim leveling up is also going to add adaptive cruise control. And so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video and subscribe if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel, but feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen, and I will see you guys in the next review. Stay gold.